Hello and welcome fellow astroneers, Ducky O'Brien here and today I'll be going over my build for the Halloween event. Now this is for gathering the seeds and the spooky squash samples and making 160 squashaline which is the first one right here. I need to make 120 adipetrol and then 80 noxothane. And um, you know gathering the seeds is pretty easy, you just plant them, harvest them. And then they spawn more seeds and you keep doing that over and over again. But then making the actual gas is a little bit time consuming because these do take a while. So I have just automated everything as much as I could. Um, so why don't we move forward with that. Since the exodynamic request platform uses the gas can, because these are gases, they'll fit in here. It loads pretty quickly too, so you don't have to worry about it being slow. Uh, I have a gas can in the center, and then I have these four auto arms that'll pick up the gas from the cauldrons. You just filter it based on what you're making. That's why I have some leftover gas here. And you turn these arms on, they'll only pick up the finished product and load it into the gas can. Uh, and then here, the base of the build is the extra large platform C. You don't have to use this, you can use a smaller platform. It just has to be able to fit the cauldron itself, and then uh, a silo or some sort of storage unit and that's pretty much it you can make do with whatever you want but basically this will give you a general idea of what I'm going for with this build now here I only fit two because if you fit three it's it's a little bit finicky with the auto arms that's the only real thing you have to watch out for so here I have two auto arms loading the two separate samples uh, the spooky squash sample is always required for the gases and then I either have the spew flower or the attack is seed coming in. And the problem is over here for these arms, as you can see here, you have to position this arm really far away from everything else and just barely touching this slot here. Uh, the reason being, if you position it, let's say over here where the blue circle was here, it's not touching the silo, it will still deposit it on the silo. And when that happens, you're gonna have the ratios messed up. For example, let's say the spooky squash got deposited here, and then it deposited the spew flower seed, and next round, it just deposits the spew flower seed here, so there's two, it blocks it, and then your production line is stalled. You don't want that to happen, so kind of careful positioning is really important. And then when you turn it on, I would suggest standing there and just making sure that it loads properly for a few cycles before moving on. To make sure that you know you, you got the positioning down uh, if you don't pay attention to it you could mess up and produce either the wrong gas or no gas because it got blocked now from here it's pretty easy you just put a salad full of seeds or these samples and then you put it right in front i stagger the arms because if you put an arm that grabs the same thing next to each other they can grab from the other storage and they'll mess up the ratios and then they'll mess up everything else. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration. That's why I staggered these arms here and made sure that they're alternating. And then over here, uh, since there's no RTG, one RTG was not enough to power this by the way. It'll work, but it's kind of slow. So I hooked it up to main base power. Uh, but if you don't have anything, I highly recommend using compound or some resource as filler to block the slots. Because again, you don't want resources going where they don't belong. It'll mess up the ratios and possibly either it will produce the wrong thing or you'll produce nothing. That's pretty much it. I have all of these set up. I'm finished with the event, so these salads are mostly empty. I do have some squash, squash samples. Leftover, a few spew flower seeds and some attack is seeds. I'm gonna go over a couple of the flaws that I had. Uh, one thing is that since these arms are just turned on, they'll keep loading. I would highly recommend powering the arms on the clock cycle. These cauldrons take a pretty long time to make gas, so you can have a you know, relatively long clock cycle and they'll still load it. They'll be ready when this is done. Uh, one other thing is that I would recommend having a on-off switch for the cycle and then a on-off switch for each individual section. Uh, just in case, let's say something messes up here and you want to pause it, then you have to run over and do it. Or if you have like a central location with all of your buttons, 
you can just simply push the off button for that run over fix it and then come back and turn it on uh, it's up to you guys i didn't finish constructing that because uh, i was getting lazy <laughs> and i just wanted the item so i just i just went for it and that's pretty much it another thing I think the biggest time sink is that I spent too much time dividing the material. So as you can see here, I have eight cauldrons and I need eight silos of spooky squash and then eight silos of a type of seed. And I divided it up from my main stash and that took probably longer than just watching this, you know, make the gas. This goes real fast, by the way, because I have eight cauldrons. If you want to fit more, you can. As you can see, I have space here, so I can make four more platforms. If you really want to fit a lot, you can just make it like a clock and just have it radiate outwards from the center. You're probably going to run into problems with the arms cross-grabbing stuff later. You're going to have to orient it a little bit differently because, you know, I need a lot of space for these arms for it to load the cauldron correctly without, you know, depositing it somewhere random. You're probably going to run into some nightmares there. But yeah, um, I need to develop a system where I have a central stash where I just come back from my shuttle run and then I deposit everything and I'll just randomly, not randomly, it will evenly distribute the materials to each section of my production line. I kind of have an idea of how to do it. Um, probably going to use like platforms and storage sensors. So let's say I have like a uh, four sections here I can have like four different platforms and once they're all filled then I can load them off into different branches and then have them make their way over here it's gonna get complicated when you have multiple resources and you gotta sort that out too so that's a lot to think about but I think I'm gonna work on that next uh, you can probably see that in my next build video if I fi ever figure it out I need it for a production line and I need it so that it can work for any production line no matter what the shape is so I have to kind of modularize it into blocks and then figure it out from there it's kind of like playing satisfactory <laughs> you're making your own conveyor belt system basically uh, and your own splitter so we'll, we'll see we'll see how that goes but anyways there you have it uh, this is a very simple build. You don't have to use extra large platform C's. You can go as small as you want. And I'm going to link uh, my stream archive where I built this and then I ran it for the event. If you want to check out the VOD, um, it took a while for me to figure this stuff out. But anyways, there you have it. This is my build. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helped. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you want to see me build anything at all, just let me know as well. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Hope it came in handy. And as always, I hope you guys are staying safe and sane out there. And catch you guys later. Probably next update. <laughs> I'll make a video. I do still play Astroneer.